Yeah. Jack. Efforts. We got a pretty nice little pad going on. Look at this. We just got an Airbnb. We're in San Jose, Costa Rica. Took our, our little tiny plane from the peninsula where we were at over to San Jose. Instead of doing the seven hour bus ride through the freaking Narnia, we decided to take a, a little 25 minute plane ride on a little tiny thing and it didn't crash. So, success. Uh, um, the plane didn't crash, but we got Mr. Crash himself. Over here, if you guys saw the last video, unbelievable that he is okay and alive. We got Kobe, my main man Kobe over there, cutting it up. Just, uh, yeah, this is what it looks like when media people, YouTube, Instagram people, all get together and have, uh, I don't know, ha have a little trip, vacation. Cameras, Cameras cords, cords yeah. fishing gear, most, import Hard most importantly, fishing gear and massagers. Anyways, where I'm going with this is uh, this video is going to be just a little bit of a wrap up from our trip. We're going to kind of talk to you guys, go in depth a little bit about some of the baits we use, some of the techniques we used, some of the culture, some of the food, Oliver potentially almost dying. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, uh, unbelievable. Go back and watch that last video. I'll link everything down below. Go watch Oliver's content. He actually has content from the front of his 4x4 uh, rolling down the hill. That ATV was like completely toast. Oh, shit. We don't want to talk about how much that's going to uh, cost my man over here. It was a little bit rough, but it, uh, a lot better than the hospital bill potentially would be but look at this we got these baits over here we're going to show you guys how we used these guys right here to catch and uh more importantly unfortunately see some really 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 giant fish uh that didn't make it to the boat but regardless uh let's let's dive into this we're going to talk about what we did what what we're going to do next time if we want to go back and how this man survived a uh, a fall down a 30 foot cliff so uh yeah stay tuned this can be a good one all right guys, here we are. Here's a spread. If you guys haven't, uh, I, I'm sure you've seen a million videos of this guy, but Oliver from Big Bass Dreams, go follow his channel right now. I'll link it down below. Go click on it. He does some incredible things. He kind of, you kind of started with like the documentary. That was your first piece of content, really. Big Bass Dreams, the, uh, the DVD, that's how I found out about you. That's how I met you. Throwing stuff like this guy right here, except throwing it for a uh, largemouth bass, trophy largemouth bass, up to almost 18 pounds this man right here is caught. So go check out all that content, it's unbelievable. But anyways, uh, the reason we're in Costa Rica right now, Oliver went down about a, wow, it's really echoey in here. He went down to Costa Rica about a month ago and he told me this is a badass place and I knew nothing about the fish we were gonna catch, and nothing about where we are gonna stay, what all was gonna go on, what kind of fishing, but I trusted him and I said, Okay, let's freaking do it. I'm totally down. I need to get out of the country. I need to get some different content besides fishing freaking ponds for two pounders. And so that's what we did. We showed up to Costa Rica and this guy showed us around. Um, we had Aaron, AA Ron, our man. He is our, uh, our kind of like our tour guide slash private chef slash translator translator concierge for the entire trip so big shout out big props to Aaron uh, like I told you guys a few videos back he actually is just releasing a TV show a documentary series so I'll link that below as well go check that out if you like some cooking traveling type stuff but this video we are going to talk about some of the techniques we use like I said some of the culture that was down there some of the crazy things that happened um, so I guess the first thing we should probably address is our little ATV extravaganza because I'm sure a lot of people are like, he, he crashed, you pushed the ATV back up there and that was it. We went and went to the waterfall and- Yeah, hey, I got hurt, man. That was it. He freaked, this man came out with two scratches on him. That was it. Unbelievable. I've, I've seen people roll uh, ATV once and die. And he rolled, we count at least 
three to three and a half, maybe four revolutions of the ATV down this straight up freaking ravine. 10 to 15 meters. <sighs> 10 to 15 meters. Yeah, we use meters now. We're all, uh, we're all educated on the metric system since we've been here for seven days. You guys, you these guys have actually been here for four or five days longer than me. So that's another thing you should check out. I'm telling you, directing you guys to go click a million links, but they did some inland freshwater stuff and got some of the gnarliest footage you will probably ever see. So again, go check that out. Link it below. Um, but yeah, so he's in one piece. We're all good to go. Um, I am going to die at some point. He is going to die at some point. Was it this trip? It was not yesterday. Thank God. <laughs> he, I mean, if you would have come out with a, a broken wrist, you would have been lucky. And oh, man. you had nothing. So Mind blown. Mind blown. Absolute craziness. Um, I guess we might as well talk about the fishing as well, too. I don't know if I did the best job of talking about that because, honestly, I had no idea and couldn't wrap my head around it until probably the second or third day. Second day, we really whacked and we caught a bunch of different species of fish, a bunch of good fish. Um, and then it kind of started clicking in my head. Um, you can only listen to somebody. I always tell you guys this. You can only listen to somebody tell you the methods, the techniques, so much over and over. Um, but going out and actually doing it yourself, you have to see how everything comes together mechanically to catch these fish or lose these fish and get a better understanding for what you need to do different next time because that happened to me several times. Um, but yeah, so basically we had two main ways we were fishing uh, for these fish, these uh, snappers. The Kubera snappers, the uh, the rooster fish, um, everything else, the, the tuna, yellowfin tuna. Uh, but basically, my favorite one by far was throwing this guy. This is a, a Mega Bass Orb Boy, really cool, unique bait. It's like a it's a top water bait, but it kind of just glides. And we were pretty much you probably see a lot of footage, and we're like, what the hell are you doing? A lot of times, just a straight reel, and that thing just is skipping. You, you, you talk about it. T talk a little bit about the speed factor as far as these fish, these big predatory ocean fish. Yeah, especially in Costa Rica, speed is a huge triggering mechanism. So the ability just to straight wind these baits fast through the column triggers an incredible amount of bites. Uh, all around us, there's needlefish by the hundreds. And if you see how fast these things are scooping through the water, away from each other, from the other predatory, uh, predator fish, you really need to emulate that flight response with your prey item, which is your lure, to trigger a bite. And these guys saw it firsthand, especially on the big roosters and stuff, when you get a big fish tailing this thing. What did I do? Just speed, speed, speed. I went right, right, gnarly right. with yeah. it. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Oh, oh, rooster, got him. Got him. Hey, forward, 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 forward. You know, you trigger a bite that way. So the ability to fish and bait fast is key and why we have this selection of baits on the table and for this trip. So anytime we were fishing in 30 meters or less, and a meter is 1.2 yards. So you know, 90 to 100 feet or less, we we're mainly throwing top water baits because we were trying to draw attention up to the surface. The visibility is incredible. What would you say the water clarity visibility was? Could it be 30, 40 feet? Yeah, easily. easy. So, you know, these things throw a lot of commotion on the surface. They throw a big silhouette that draws those predator fish up. So, and frankly, who doesn't love a big giant topwater bite from a rooster fish or a Kubera snapper? Unbelievable. Hopefully you guys enjoyed some of the, <laughs> like, I think some of those blow-ups are some of the most epic blow-ups ever captured on film. Um, something we kind of touched on and talked about a lot is maybe the, uh, the over-romanticism of the GT and the uh, peacock bass, two amazing species of fish. Cool fish. Super cool fish, and there's, but there's tons of content out there. We're kind of trying to get, out, get off the beaten path and, and do something different. And what Oliver discovered when he was down here last time was these Kubera snappers, which a lot of people know about Kubera snappers, but probably the most savage fish that I've ever fished for, not probably, 100%. The most savage fish I've ever fished for. It's like if a, I don't know. I, I know GTs get huge, but like a, it's like a peacock bass if it could weigh 100 pounds. 130 and even. 130 pounds is the world record. With big and canine and teeth. Giant, giant teeth. That's why these baits look <laughs> like this guy right here. This one right here was one that uh, got a lot of bites. This one did too. I mean, look at that. There's puncture holes in the wood from those fish coming up, and the the bite wasn't even like the craziest part. You hook one of these things, and I got absolutely taken to school throwing this oar boy uh, midway through the trip. You guys probably saw that, but I hooked it, and it took drag for about 60 feet, and then it almost just like stopped, and it was like, is this guy still here? Are you still gonna do this? 
and he's felt and he's and I pulled. I was like, oh yeah, I got him turned, and he's like, oh, he is still there. And they went, this is this is this is a snap, broke me off wow. in the rocks. Unbelievably powerful fish. I did catch one. That was probably the highlight fishing wise of my trip was to catch the one that I did. It wasn't a big one, but super, super cool to catch them and see one in person, those amazing teeth. And that brings me to the second method we were using to catch them was with these odd looking lead spoons. Um, yeah, talk about that a little bit. So anytime we were fishing deeper than 30 meters, we were fishing vertical spoons for the most part. So we had two main options here, and this is the, uh, gosh, I keep forgetting. This is the slash beat backslider, which is a vertical jig that's designed to be fished with big swings of the rod, you know, you, you throw a lot of cadence, a lot of rhythm into it, and you know, you got, you're trying to trigger a bite that way, pretty much straight vertically. Same same reaction bait type style too, Absolutely. and it was something that I had to, again, wrap my head around and actually get out and do. He was telling me how to fish it, but until you see what the fish want and how you need to retrieve your bait, you have no idea. It was such hard, fast rips. You let it go to the bottom, settles on the bottom, and then immediately engage the reel, and you're snapping that thing, you're reeling about as fast as you can, and then you stop doing that, and then you actually do reel as fast as you can for like another 40, 50 feet because there's a different different species of fish in a different level of the water column that want that thing burning as fast as you can pull it. Unbelievable, totally different than any freshwater stuff I've ever done. So anytime the sun was high, we had these solid colors that were doing really well, but as soon as the sun went down, the glow stuff really started to Absolutely. get bit really well. Yeah. Especially in this smaller spoon too, which is the Mega Bass Metal X Cut Upper. That's Kobe's bait right here that he was doing a ton of work on. Look at that. And this boy. is right here, this is my Kubera bait. This That's is it. the one I yeah, caught it on. It's got puncture holes in the lead from its teeth from a small one. So <laughs> Pretty unbelievable fish species. Um, the third way we fished for them was, I'll let the uh, the West Coast man right here tell you about it because we went West Coast on them. So, you know, the, the time I was here a month ago or so, I brought a very limited selection of tackle. I didn't know what I was getting into, but being able to put my eyes and experience like the type of structure and the type of fish that we were targeting, I knew that we would wreck fish on a surface iron and a heavy yo-yo iron. This is a staple on the west coast saltwater scene. You know, you got the light versions which you fish up near the surface and then you got heavy versions which we were sinking down in those 30, 40, 50, 60 meters and putting the reel in gear and literally all you're doing is winding this thing as fast as you can with the 661 tranks. I mean that thing is smoking through the water column and there were at least three, thi three fish I hooked on this jig. I have no idea what the hell they were, but they left the gnarliest teeth I mean, gouges. This... And I broke that jig off. That's that's nothing, really. The one I had, I, I mean, for the first time in my career, I scraped out one of these heavy gauge treble hooks on a, on an iron jig. I've never done that. This is just, this is, I mean, this is a different universe to me. <laughs> um, I have no idea. I mean, spoons always get bit. Casting spoons, it's basically a big casting spoon. You can jig the heavy one too. But this is absolutely wild. Blows my mind. They, we did a little bit for calicos when I was out uh, fishing Catalina Island. But yep. this is a totally insane way to fish. I know probably 95% of you are strictly freshwater guys, basically like me. Um, a lot of the saltwater guys are probably like, yeah, of course, it's the surface iron. It's been around forever, but this is just a wild way to fish, totally different, totally cool and badass. Um, I guess the other thing we did when we did the surf fishing, we tried a lot of different stuff, and that turned out to be really tough fishing. We caught, we did end up catching some fish the second day, though, and that was totally awesome. Um, Oliver caught a really nice snook, blew my mind. It was so cool. I've never seen one in person. Uh, so neither did I. Cool. First one, and it was cool to not catch it, you know, in Florida or on the, the Gulf of Mexico or something. Catching it way down Pacific Ocean snook off the beach, standing on land, uh, pretty freaking cool. And then we caught some jacks and stuff too. But the deal there, um, it was all bait related. Uh, water was kind of muddy. The bait was hiding in the muddy water, and those big predatory fish were just ambushing them, waiting for them to pop out, and then it would just be an eruption of bait. But the underspin, underspin with the swim bait on it was the deal. Something, a, a small little three to four inch compact bait imitator. We tried top waters, we tried lipless baits, crank baits, a um, little bit of everything, and it didn't didn't get it done. So props to our man Afrin at Warbaits for a- uh, Big shout, follow him, subscribe. Follow. He's only got 4,000 subscribers with the F. Mind blowing. He peach ya. He peach ya. Uh, I don't know, does YouTube, 
algorithm? Like, I know you can't say fuck on a video, but <laughs> can you say, you think the computer picks up me picha? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> so I'll start saying that maybe. So that goes back to the culture, right? That's yeah, why, part of totally the big cool. reason I wanted Ben to come down here is to experience something completely different, immerse himself in a brand new environment, whole new species of fish, you know, but the people, man. I mean, what did you think of the people that you got to meet Super this cool. past week? It, it was just a totally different vibe because I've been out of the country probably 10 times or so, but it was always like family vacations. We always did like the touristy, all-inclusive resort type stuff like that. But this is the first time we kind of got off the beaten path, or I did, and uh, really got to see I really got off the beaten path. You did, for sure. You, uh, you took the, the quick exit down to the river last night. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, the, the people are incredible. The vibe is totally different than what I expected, to be honest. Um, you go to Mexico, um, obviously it's it's like 100% Mexican people that aren't tourists. But Costa Rican was, it was a totally, uh, it was a mesh of different cultures, different transplants, different food styles. I mean, eating at our, probably the favorite place I went to eat is the Ar Argentinian Steakhouse. When Casa Del twice, Mar. Casa Del Mar. They, they cooked our fish, our snapper right there. But they had amazing meat, and I'm I'm pretty picky on my meat. I'm, I'm not like anything. I'm not a picky eater, but I'm from the Midwest. We have really, really good meat. And this stuff was incredible. It was totally sick. So Chimichurri sauce. Chimichurri sauce, man. It, it's, a, it's an amazing mesh of cultures. If you want to go somewhere in Latin America, uh, Central America, Mexico type area, even South America, I'd strongly recommend checking out Costa Rica. Obviously, the fishing is solid, uh, and the, the culture is super, super cool. But yeah, we had a good time. What what was your favorite thing of the trip, fishing related? What was your favorite moment? Well, the last time around, I got my first rooster fish, which I was stoked on. I got three that day, including a pretty big one, probably 40, 50 pound class. Hmm. But we caught them on bait, which is cool. I've been bait fishing all my life, saltwater fishing. But I really, really wanted one on an artificial. And I got her on that bad boy right there. Hmm. Super cool. Super. That was sick. badass. Yeah. Favorite non-fishing part of the trip? Um, that you're alive? Tumbling down a cliff. <laughs> he wanted to do a little more exploring on the trip than we did, apparently. You know, be alive, baby. It's pretty Pure badass. Vida. Pure life. Pure vida. That's what you say down here. Pure vida. Pure yeah. life is what it means literally. It's, it's a slogan they use down here heavily. It's kind of like aloha is used in Hawaii as a greeting, as a, a departing slogan, you yep. know? So it's a hello, a goodbye. Just a general Pura Vida. I mean, honestly, the fight was probably my favorite thing. I've never been pulled on like that before. Um, I mean, the Kubera. I mean, have Kubera. you ever been more humbled by a fish? Never been more humbled you know? by a fish. I've, I got humbled. I went two for 17 on big fish opportunities this week. Yeah. That is the worst I've ever done. And I mean, for the most part, I did everything I could within my power. It just didn't work out. You know. I, bent out hooks, I busted off on 80 to 80 pound connections with the right amount of drag, 25, 30 pounds of drag almost on these tranks reels. Just uh, those fish are big and mean and powerful. And that's what makes them dope to go chase. Absolutely. <laughs> so hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you enjoyed the, the entire Costa Rican series. And hopefully it sparks some interest for you to do kind of what we did, to get out and, and do a dude's trip or, or do whatever kind of trip you want to, but get out and explore different things. Get out from behind your desk. Um, get off the beaten path, not as far off the beaten path as this man right here went yesterday, unfortunately. Uh, but go try different things, go fish new places. I mean, go check out Costa Rica or go do your own adventure. Go go see what the fishing's like in anywhere else, any other country or any state. It, it's yeah. not hard. It's not. It's really not difficult. Plan something, get out and explore, go live life. That's what we did. So. And take baby steps. You don't have to go to straight, straight to Costa Rica if you've never left your hometown. Of course. Go across town. Go across the state. Just step outside of your comfort zone that's how you grow yep that's how you learn as a fisherman too it's like oliver told me when we got here this stuff this saltwater stuff will make you a better bass fisherman i totally believe that the the more understanding you have for fish reacting and your gear and how your gear handles things and how you can mentally handle i don't know the timing and everything is just it it helps everything helps learning every type of different fishing helps so something i always try to do that's why i always say, I got the uh, fish it all shirts buffs everything so what it means, go try new things, go uh, go fish everything, learn from people like this guy, like Aaron, that uh, showed us around on this trip, and uh, I don't know, 
go cool places. I live, stay learning. Live your damn life. That's it, man. But uh, yeah, we're going to wrap this guy up. Thank you guys so much for watching this, the whole series. If you could, comment down below. Let us know what your favorite part of the entire Costa Rica trip was. Um, unbelievable trip. Unbelievable memories. Great fishing. Better friends. Good people. It's oh, good stuff. Nice, man. It's beautiful. Puerto Vida. Puerto Vida. Anyways, take it easy, MFers. We're out of here. Peace. Ni picha! Ni picha! I'm not sorry. I can't help this love like mine. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I can't stop with a love like mine.